tell me. 19 questions on general basic maintenance for your vehicles. Checks that should be done at least once a week or once a month. There will be 19 questions which we're going to go through today. There will only be two questions on your driving test. To open the bonnet on my car, you need to go over to the passenger side and grab the handle here to release the bonnet. To release the bonnet, you put your fingers underneath, push the button to the left, lift up the lid, locate the stay, place the stay into the hole over here, which will secure the engine. Identify where you would check the engine oil level and tell me how you would check that the engine has sufficient oil. We would locate the dipstick, we would remove the dipstick, we will wipe the end of the dipstick, when we will place the dipstick back in, we will take it back out and then we will check that there is oil on that dipstick. If we needed to top the oil, engine oil up, it would be topped up in that place there. Identify where the windscreen wash washer reservoir is and tell me how you would check the level. This is the windscreen wash washer reservoir here. That is the symbol for the reservoir. To check the level, we would just open the top and have a look inside. Okay. Identify where you would check the engine coolant level. Tell me how you would check the engine has the correct coolant. This is your engine coolant represented by that symbol and there is a maximum and a minimum markings on the coolant. Okay, identify where the brake fluid reservoir is and tell me how you would check you have sufficient brake fluid in the tank. This symbol here represents the brake fluid, this is the reservoir, and there is a marking on the side, minimum and maximum. To close the bonnet, hold it with one finger, one hand rather, place the stay in there, bring the bonnet down, just gently drop it. You'll do. Show me how you would check the direction indicators are working. The easiest way to do it is to press the hazard lights. That will release all four indicators where we can walk, get out the car and walk all the way around to check they are working. Show me how you would check the brake lights are working on the car. What would you would need to do is you would need to press the brake pedal, okay? Then you can either ask the examiner to get out and have a look, or we could use a reflective surface to check that the brake lights are working. Show me how you would check the power assisted steering is working on your vehicle. To check the power steering, what you need to be able to do is start the engine up. You should be able to freely move the steering wheel gently from side to side. If you get any resistance, there is a problem with your power steering. Tell me where you would find the information for the press tyre pressures for the car and how the tyre pressures should be checked. You can find the information on this sticker here which is located on the, on the inside of the passenger door. Also, you can find it inside the glove box in the manufacturer's handbook. Tyre pressures should be checked at a garage using a reliable pressure gauge and should basically be checked in the morning when the tyres are cold or before starting a long journey.
show me how you would check the parking brake or the handbrake for excessive wear. Make sure you keep control of the vehicle. Firstly, you would need to depress the foot brake. Then you would need to place your hand on the handbrake, take the handbrake fully off, then explain to the examiner that the handbrake needs to come on so you get a bit of resistance and it will actually lock into place. The handbrake should not come all the way up. It should not come to the end of its travel. Tell me how you would check the head restraint is correctly adjusted so it provides the best protection in the event of a crash. The head restraint needs to be roughly level with the top of your head or your eyes and ears are into the centre of it. To adjust it you can push the button in just here and you can alter the head restraint by gently moving it up and down. Tell me how you would check the tyres to to ensure they have the sufficient tread depth and that their general condition is safe to be used on the road. So a tri tread depth should be 1.6 millimetres and we should check it three quarters across the centre but all the way around the tyre. Okay? We don't want to check the tyre walls because they wear out first. We're also looking to make sure that they're in good condition so we're looking to see if there are any cuts or if there are any deep bulges in the tyres. <laughs> Show me how you would check the horn is working. To check the horn, all you'd need to do is place your hand on there and you would press the horn. Show me how you would clean the windscreen using the windscreen washers and wipers. To clean the front windscreen, you need to pull the arm towards you, hold it until the water fires onto the windscreen. To clean the rear windscreen, you would need to twist the end of the um, wiper stalk two clicks, and that will fire water onto the rear windscreen. Then you must cancel the rear windscreen wiper. Tell me how you would check the headlights and tire tail lights are working. To check the headlights, what you would need to do, twist the end, two clicks, that puts on the dipped headlights, then we would get out of the vehicle and we would check that the front and the rear lights are working. Show me how you would set the demister controls to clear all the windows effectively. This should include the, both the front and the rear windscreens. Okay, to clear the front windscreen, we need to turn the dial to this symbol here. That then puts all the blowers onto your front windscreen. This here is your fan settings, where we can increase the speed of the heat, the, the air going to the windscreen, and this one here is your temperature. To clean the rear windscreen, we would need to depress this button here. This then heats up the lines in your rear windscreen. Show me how you would switch on the rear fog lights and explain when you would need to use them. Okay, you would need to use fog lights when visibility is below 100 meters. To put on your fog lights, first of all you need to turn on your dipped headlights, two clicks, and on my vehicle to put on the fog lights we have to put the fronts on first which is one click and then we put on the rears which is another click. To cancel the fog lights it's one click back then another click back and then we need to turn the headlights completely off. How would you know if there was a problem with your anti-lock braking system or your ABS? When you turn on the ignition for the first time, the ABS light will light. If that light stays on, that means there is a problem with it. If the light goes out, the, cut, the ABS is fine. If the light does stay on, you must take your car to the garage.
Show me how you would switch your headlights from dip to main beam and explain how you would know that the main beam is on whilst inside the car. First of all, we would need to turn the dipped headlights on, which is two clicks. Then to put on full beam, you would pull the whole lever towards yourself until it clicks. Then that should highlight a blue light on your dashboard, which indicates you now have full beam on. To cancel the full beam, pull the lever towards you, then cancel your headlights. To check the brakes are working before starting a journey, Press the foot brake as you're moving away and what you're looking for you're looking to see if the brakes do pull from side to side if they do there's a problem with the brake pads or if they feel light or spongy.